Actually, I have to admit, I'm, I'm a little bit new to the uh, sustainable food movement. I grew up in Alaska, spent my whole life studying trees. So it's, it's a pleasure to be here. It's a pleasure to be a part of this. So I, I work at the U.S. Department of Agriculture, and today is about changing the way we eat. And I, and I believe local and regional food systems can be transformative. They're good for farmers. They can help them have access to new markets, especially beginning farmers, without a lot of access to capital. It's good for consumers in terms of expanding access to fresh food and healthy food, as well as a connection to that food and, and hopefully the land. And it's good for communities, especially rural communities, in terms of economic development. And the good news is all indicators tell us that consumer interest in local foods is, is booming. The number of farmers markets, as you can see here in 2010, has more than tripled in the last 15 years. There's over 6,000 today, which is about two for every county in the country. The rise of CSAs or farm shares is even more dramatic. In 1986, there were two. Today, there's nearly 4,000. And when you add up the sales of all these markets, it's over a billion dollars a year, which is twice what it was 10 years ago. Unfortunately, when you add up the sales of all these markets, it's still less than 1% of the whole. And so if this were to double or triple again, it would still only be a small piece of the overall pie. But we do have all this consumer interest. We do have all of this growth and demand. And so there's the opportunities here for us to scale up and scale out and bring local and regional into the mainstream. And so this, this is nothing new. This has been going on for a few years now, and it, it's really exciting. I, working at the USDA, I have a bit of a perch, and I'm able to, to watch all of the great projects going on around the country. And so today I want to talk about three individuals, I think, that are just doing incredible work. And I chose these three folks for a couple of reasons. One. They've, they've looked around in their communities and, and formed strategic partnerships that have helped them not only survive, but thrive. And secondly, these, these folks are maintaining the integrity of what it means to be local, but they're expanding out. And, and they're now they're commercially vi viable, and, and it's spreading like wildfire. So the first gentleman I want to talk about today is Carl Coopers. He, along with his business partner, Fred Fleming, started Shepherd's Grain a few years ago. They're a cooperative of wheat growers in eastern Washington. And Carl and Fred were talking, and they realized that they wanted to get out of the commodities game. They, they would grow and harvest their wheat, and they were forced to take whatever price was available to them on any given day. So instead, they wanted to be able to actually sell their wheat for what it cost them to produce. And so uh, they realized they needed a few things to do this. They're, they're both great marketers, and they were going to be able to need to market and sell this wheat. But the other two things they needed, they didn't have. One was a mill to process it into flour, and the second was trucks to distribute it and get it into the markets. So they, they looked around their community, and uh, it turns out there was only one mill in the area. So they actually ended up partnering with uh, Archer Daniels Midland. Yes, that Archer Daniels Midland, who not only now processes their wheat, but also uh, distributes it into the regional market. And so this, this cooperative of what was once two guys has now grown into a cooperative of 33 and they're farming over 140,000 acres uh, using sustainable farming methods. And so now, uh, when a consumer in the Northwest goes to buy a bag of their flour, they know that that purchase is not only helping the farmer by helping them receive a fair price, but also the environment. And in fact, they actually, they know which farmer it's helping out because uh, you can punch in the barcode from, from the bag and you can, uh, you can see exactly which grower grew that wheat and, um, and, and their story. A wonderful partnership here between, in this case, uh, ADM and Shepherd's Grain to help scale out uh, the great work that they were doing. The next partnership I want to talk about uh, starts with Diana Endicott. About 15 years ago, Diana was selling tomatoes to supermarkets in Kansas City. She's based in kind of rural southeastern Kansas. Diana realized that a lot of her fellow rural small farmers were facing the same issues, whether it was bringing their product into market or branding it and selling it. The good news is the grocery store she was selling to, Ball Food Chains, uh, Ball Food Stores, they, they, they kind of realized, this was 15 years ago, they realized there was something to this whole local thing, that they could make money at it. And so Diana, being the organizer that she is, she, she brought together about 150 producers in the region to start uh, aggregating using Ball Food Stores uh, warehouses facility 
uh, and, and their trucks actually, started aggregating and selling their product uh, through ball food stores. And so now, the benefit to Diana and the fellow growers is you have 150 folks who are making money and staying on the land doing what they love. And Ball Food Stores actually sold more than $4 million worth of their product through their stores last year alone. And Diana, uh, again, being who she is, she's actually used this partnership using the, the warehouse and the trucking to start another partnership. And just last growing season started working with the Wallace Center and Cisco Foods to begin to integrate sustainable local product into Cisco's food services in Kansas City. Lastly, and, and selfishly, I want to talk about my farmer. This is Zach Lester, loves carrots. His business is called Tree and Leaf Farm. They're based in Virginia. A couple years ago, I visited Zach on his farm and met his wife, Georgia, and his son, Owen. And they were renting about eight acres of land about an hour outside of D.C. And, and they were selling into the D.C. farmer's markets every weekend. And so I, I, I would you know, see Zach every week. I'd, I'd buy my veggies, my carrots. I was ecstatic when one day he told me that uh, he'd actually successfully uh, applied for a loan from USDA's Farm Service Agency. And with that loan, he'd been able to go from renting eight acres of land to actually buying his own 48 acres of land, as well as some greenhouses, a barn, and, and a home. And so this was powerful to me for a couple of reasons. First, it's a significant moment in anyone's life when they're buying land and a house and a business. And it was, it was a pleasure to watch that. Secondly, the Farm Service Agency, they're not always known for supporting local and regional food systems. But at this point in time, they provided Zach with the best possible loan he could get. And actually, when, when drought hit, uh, right after he'd made his transition, Zach told me what a relief it was to have a, a bank that understood agriculture. Again, a partnership here, in this case, between the USDA and a farmer to help him scale up. He's still selling in the farmer's markets, thankfully, but he's also moved into catering businesses and restaurants in the D.C. metro area. As I sit in my USDA perch and I do all my profound thinking and, and, and beard stroking on a daily basis, I've realized what these partnerships have taught me. Those of us in agriculture, whether it's growing carrots or advocating for sustainable food systems, we're in the vast minority. Most people think of food as just that, food. They don't realize the, the growing, the transporting, the processing, the marketing that went into that. So those of us that are in this minority we're facing a lot of really profound issues together. It could be the conservation of farmland, protecting it from development, soil degradation, developing the next generation of farmers and ranchers, or providing a foundation for sustainable economic development. I'm here to talk about how I think that local and regional food systems can address these issues. And fortunately, my boss, President Obama, he agrees. He spent a lot of time in Iowa on the campaign trail talking about local and regional and how we need to grow it. The folks that I spoke about today, they've actually, all, all three of them have been funded by USDA through just a few of a wide variety of programs that we have that can support local and regional food systems. And it's these programs, along with communicating our support for local and regional and strengthening that connection between farmers and consumers that make up the Know Your Farmer, Know Your Food initiative. And so, whether it's partnering with the USDA whether it's partnering with a, a large corporation, the retail sector, someone in your community. I think it's a willingness to collaborate and be open to partnerships where they make sense, along with all the energy, the innovation, creativity that we've seen in the local foods movement already that can help us scale out and, and go from local into regional into midsize and be a part of the mainstream. So in the process, we will, we will move toward a food system that's better for farmers and the land, it's better for consumers and their health, and all the individuals and organizations in between. Thank you.